Next, let's look at the, some of those special conditions that can happen when we have LP models. And we talk about it here because we can see them clearly using the graphical representation. So first, let's look at this example. This is an example of alternate optimal solutions. First, let's plot this on the coordinate system and see how the optimal solution will look like. So if you can take a look at this problem, look at the model and plot it uh, on your um, on your graph. So just take out a piece of paper, um, draw the coordinate system and plot the physical region and also the objective function's level curve. And so pause the video now and plot it yourself. So we're going to do it together. Let's look at the first uh, constraint. So we do the same following the steps we talked about earlier. Um, identify two points, uh, one on the x1 axis and another on the x2 axis, and then um, plot this line here, the first one, OK? So if we put x1 to 0, x2 would be 200, and x2 to 0, x1 would be 200, OK? So those are the two points, and we get one line. And because x2 is positive on the vertical uh, axis, and uh, it's less than equal to constraint, so we shade the area under it. OK, then the next one, 9x1 plus 6x2 less than equal to 1566. So the same with our example. We find those two points, and it's less than equal to constraint. We shade the area under. And only this area is the overlapping area. So we're going to just shade the overlapping area. So this is our new feasible region. Then we move to the next one. The next constraint, identify the two points, connect it with a line, and the x2 is positive co coefficient, x2 on the vertical axis. Less than equal to constraint, so we use a we shade the area under. So once we have this line here, if we shade the area under, the overlapping area is here. So this is our feasible region. Now we'll look at the objective function. Okay. So we now have the feasible region. The objective function from those two coefficients will be able to get the slope of our level curves. So what's the level curve slope? Remember that we do, we make this objective function equal to bz, right? And because x2 is on the y-axis, so we leave x2 on one side and move this to the other side and divide this 300. So our slope is negative 450. We move this x1 to the other side, divided by this 300 here. Which can be reduced to negative 9 over 6. OK, so with this, we can draw the level curves. The easiest one level curve would be um, we can find, the, for example, 45, 30. OK, 45, 30 would be something like this. OK, um, or if we multiply it uh, uh, by 2, we'll, we'll have like a 90, 60. So we can do 90, 60 will be something like this. And then because this is a maximization problem, we want to maximize the intercept on your x2 axis. So you want to push it outwards. OK, so the gradient vector is a positive, positive for your objective function. And it's a maximization problem. So you move in the gradient vector direction. So you would move this way um, until you touch the edge or the corner point of the feasible region. So if you draw it true to scale, you will find that this level curve, when it reach to the corner point part, it overlap with this edge here. Can you think about why? So if we move it outwards further, it will go out of the feasible region. Okay, and if we move it inward, then it's not optimal solution. Um, the intercept on the x2 axis will be less than what we have now. So if you look at the slope here, 
the level curve slope is negative 9 over 6. And it happened to be the same with this constraint slope. So we just constrained it, this one. It's this second constraint, right? And if you look at the slope of the second constraint, it's the same. It's negative 9 over 6. Okay, so the level curve slope is the same as slope of the second constraint when we change it to a straight equation. So that means when we push this level curve in this direction, all of those points on this overlapping part will be an optimal solution to our problem. Okay, so all those points, all those points in this overlapping part, this illustrates an example of an alternative solution problem. So in this problem, the objective function would be exactly the same because you see the intercept on this x2 is the same. So that's the z, the objective function z divided by 300. That's the intercept. It's the same. So that means the z value would be the same. But you can pick any point on this overlapping edge part, and uh, it will be one of the optimal solution. Okay, so this is the example of having alternative optimal solution. So there's more than one optimal solution, any point on this on this edge that's overlapping when that uh, level curve of the objective function and the constraints that uh, happen to be at the outside that overlaps. So this one part becomes the whole line that yields the optimal solution. Now let's look at another example. Another example is called a redundant constraint. Okay, so um, objective function is the same and uh, one of the constraints get changed, the first one. Um, in the original problem, the pump we had is uh, 200 but now this company had more pumps so instead of 200 they have 225 pumps um, though as a result the first constraint changed to be x1 plus x2 less than equal to 225 okay so the rest of the constraint objective function they are the same with original problem but this one will have to replot it again so if you can plot this on your paper on a piece of paper um, draw your coordinate system, okay, and then plot those three constraints yourself. Just give more practice to it and you will get better. Okay, so draw your coordinate system, the x1 and x2, and then plot the first constraint. Okay, so the first constraint now, find out the two points that would be um, 0, 2 to 5, and 2 to 5, 0, right? So that would be the first constraint, okay? And the less than equal to, so we shade the area under it. Then we move to the next constraint. Next constraint, exactly the same with the previous uh, uh, model. So we highlight this, we draw this line here and uh, shade the area that overlap with the previous one. Then we move to the third one. We third the constraint, identify the two points and draw that line. And then you will find that now the feasible region would be this part here, right? So it's this part. This is our new feasible region. Okay. And if we look at the three constraints, or the three boundary lines defined by the constraints. It's this one, this one, and this one. And this is our feasible region. Now, look at this boundary line defined by the pump constraint. That's the first constraint that we changed the right-hand side from 200 to 225, okay? Without it, the feasible region did not change, right? With it or without it, the feasible region is still the same. So what does that mean? This constraint here is a, a redundant constraint. A redundant constraint does not play a role in defining the feasible region. Okay, without 
the, this constraint or with it, the feasible region is still the same. It just does not play any role in defining the feasible region. So this is uh, the definition of that redundant constraint. So we had uh, one problem we talked about earlier that uh, deals with redundant constraints. Um, and you will have um, um, other problems in the future that you may find some of the constraints are just redundant because uh, it will be satisfied for sure or it just does not play any role in defining the feasible region. Um, so in those situations, you can still write out those uh, constraints. And if you know it's redundant, you can just put a, a note behind it, say this is a redundant. Okay, then the next example, unbounded solution. So when we talk about enumerating corner point method, we said that method will not work if we have unbounded solutions. And we said it's because uh, when you enumerate the corner point, you have to have those corner points that you can calculate uh, what the objective function value is at those points. But if you don't really have the point, if you don't really have uh, an area that has those corner points, instead it just keeps going, it's unbounded, then that method won't work. So let's look at this example here. Again, if you can take out a piece of paper, okay, pause the video, draw the coordinate system, and see where your optimal solution is, or at first, what your feasible region looks like, and where your optimal solution is. If you are done, let's check it together, okay? So we're going to plot the first constraint. First constraint, find the two points. Set x1 to be 0, your x2 would be 400. Set x2 to be 0, your x1 will be 400. So we have the first line here, just go from 0, 400 to 400, 0. So it's this line here, OK? And uh, check, our x2, which is on the vertical axis, has a positive sign. And it's greater than or equal to constraint. So we would shade the area above it, this direction, okay? And then next, let's look at this constraint. The second constraint, when you set x1 to be 0, your x2 will be 200. So x2 to be 200 here. So it's this point here, right? And when you set your x2 to be 0, your x1 will be negative 400, okay? So it would be a point at here. So our second line would be like this. And our x2 is positive, okay, on the vertical side. Positive. So less than equal constraints means its area under it. So we have the area above the first constraint and area under the second constraint. The feasible region is somewhere here, okay. So it's, it's this area here. Just enlarge it a little bit, okay. And when we use our objective function to draw the level curves, okay, if you recall, our objective function slope is negative one. So you move the x1 to the other side, it's become negative one. So the slope is negative one. So the level curve would be something like this, okay. So the first level could be um, x1 plus x2 equals to 600. So that's one level curve and another level curve, 800. And um, this is a maximization problem. So that means we want to maximize the intercept. Okay, let me draw this. So we want to maximize this intercept on the x2 axis. So if we just... Uh, Keep going this way, okay? Sorry, I can't really draw straight using this mouse here. So if we just keep going, then the intercept on this x2 will just keep increasing, right? So we can keep going outward in that way. And we will never touch the edge of that feasible region because our feasible region just keep going, okay? And this shaded area um, stops here, but in fact, it keeps going to that infinite positive direction. And uh, our 
level curve can keep going in that direction too without touching a corner point. So this is a example of unbounded solution. So the solution is unbounded. You can basically keep going, keep increasing it because it's a maximization problem. So the optimal objective function value is a positive infinity. Okay. And solution is unbounded, it's in infinity too. Okay, so this illustrates an example of a bounded solution. But what about uh, um, the problem? If the problem is, uh, is a minimization problem, what do you think? Where is the optimal solution? If the objective function value need to be decreased. So that means uh, the intercept on this uh, vertical axis need to be as small as possible. So you move, 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 move all the way. And and this level curve happen to be the same slope with this one, right? With this constraint. So if we are talking about the minimization problem, then we have uh, the previous special um, condition, which is alternative solution. And all the points on this line here would be the optimal solution. And you get the minimized objective function value. Okay. So if the problem is a maximization, it is unbounded. It keeps moving outward without touching the corner points. And if it's a minimization problem, then we have alternative solution that occur on this line here. Okay, so you see a problem, whether it's unbounded or not, really depends first on its feasible region. If the feasible region goes in a certain direction without uh, um, like a, another constraint defining the, the edge or the corner point. Uh, and the second, it depends on if uh, the objective function is maximized or minimizing. Okay, next let's look at an example of infeasibility. Again, I encourage you to pause the video. Just to plot this. These are really simple problems and use this as opportunity to practice drawing that feasible region. Okay. But once you are done, then continue. We're going to look at it together. 2x1 plus 2x2 greater than or equal to 400. So when we set x1 to be 0, our x2 will be 200, right? So 200 somewhere here. And when we set our x2 to be 0, our x1 will be 200. So something like this. So we'll have this first first line here. And then for the second one, oh, and sorry, let's go back. And because it's greater than or equal to constraint and the x2 coefficient on the vertical axis is a positive. So if it's greater than or equal to constraint, then our feasible region for this first constraint is on this side, okay? So you would shade the area above it. It's, it's this area. Then let's plot the second one. And second constraint, set x1 to be 0, your x2 would be 150. Set x2 to be 0, your x1 would be 150. Okay, so it will be a line like this. But this is uh, less than equal to constraint. Given that the sign of x2 is positive, for less than equal to constraint, we would shade the area under it, right? So this is the feasible region for the second constraint. So now you see that uh, we have the feasible region of the first constraint on this side, okay? And the second on this side. Those two feasible regions do not overlap. What does that mean? There's no way to satisfy these two constraints at the same time. So their feasible region does not have overlap area then we encounter a problem of infeasibility, meaning that this problem is infeasible. We cannot find any feasible solution to this problem because 
the constraints cannot be satisfied at the same time. You may find that sometimes this is the way. Um, there are just some conditions you can't really satisfy at the same time. You have to remove some of them or you have to relax some of them. Okay, so this is infeasibility. You cannot find a feasible region. You cannot find a feasible solution to this problem. Now next, example one. Here I give you the feasible region being aligned. So in the previous examples, all of our constraints are less than equal to or greater than equal to constraints. And in this one, so we had one additional constraint, which is equal to. So a strict equal to constraint. In some of the models, uh, we said, uh, let's use the greater than equal to or less than equal to to make the problem less restrictive if we can, right? But in some situations, you have to have a user equation. So if, for example, in this case, um, if um, x1 and x2 represent the number of products to, to produce, Okay, and you have to produce only 800 in total. Then you will have to write this constraint as equal to constraint. Then let's plot this one. Okay, so this is just the one additional constraint added to a previous problem. Um, so remember that in this first problem, in the previous problem, without without this constraint here, this is the feasible so uh, feasible region. Okay. And uh, this is our objective function. So this is the feasible region, and that objective function we add happen to be the same with one of the level curve we draw. It's x1 plus x2 equals to 800. It, it's it's this line here. Okay. So it's the feasible region plus uh, this this line here. Then what do you think the uh, feasible region is now? So this blue shaded area is the feasible region defined by those four constraints. Now we added one constraint. We added one constraint that x1 plus x2 need to be equal to 800. It's this line here. It's this line here. So what's the solution? What's the feasible solution? Where are the feasible solutions? This additional constraint defines this line here, right? And our feasible region need to be a region that uh, satisfy all the constraints. Okay, so it's uh, this part of this line within the feasible region that becomes our feasible solution line. Okay, so think about it again. Before adding this uh, constraint, this uh, equation constraint, our feasible region is this blue area, okay? And it's unbounded, it's going all the way up. But once we add this equation, the equation defines a line. That means all the points on this line represent a feasible solution that satisfy this sole constraint, okay? But to satisfy this entire model, to satisfy all those constraints, then you need to satisfy all the constraints. So it's this part of the line within this feasible region that defines our feasible solutions. So in this specific example, this part of the line, okay, this red line here is our feasible region. Then with this, we have this special situation where the feasible region is a line. Okay, so it's a part of this line defined by this equation constraint. That's within the feasible region defined by those previous constraints, which are greater than equal to less than equal to constraints. Now, if our feasible region can be a line, it can also be a point. Okay, we know that with the two lines, we can define one point. So if our model contains at least two equations, then we can end up being having a problem that has just one point that's defined by those two lines as the feasible region. And also, you can imagine if this is the only feasible region as a point, okay, then this is the optimal solution too, because that's the only possible solution. 
So the feasible region can be a line or it can be a point. And in this case, this one point is also the optimal solution because that's your only choice. Okay, so now let's summarize. Those special conditions we just talked about that can happen when we have LP models. First, we may have alternative optimal solutions. Alternative optimal solutions happen when we have the same slope for the objective function level curve and one of the constraints. Okay, and know that that constraints need to be the one that happen to be defining the best objective function value. Okay, sometimes you can have uh, the objective function um, with the same slope as one of the constraints, but that the overlapping part of that object function with the, that constraint does not necessarily give you the best objective function value. Then in that situation, you won't have alternative optimal solution. Okay, it alternate optimal solution only happens when your objective function level curve has the same slope with one constraint that when they overlap, they give the best objective function value. Second, redundant constraint. So the redundant constraints happen when you have one constraint that does not define the feasible region. Okay, so that uh, feasible region will be the same with or without uh, that redundant constraint. It just does not affect how the feasible region looks like. It does not play a role in defining the feasible region. And the third uh, special condition we talk about is unbounded solutions. So when you have uh, a feasible region that can go um, in a certain direction without ever stopping. Okay, so when you don't have any constraints, stop that uh, feasible region to go in a certain direction. And uh, when your objective function happen to be um, improved in that direction, if your level curve goes in the same direction, you can keep um, improving your objective function value, whether it's the maximization or minimization, then we have unbounded solutions. So unbounded solutions can happen on the positive uh, infinity side. It can go to negative infinity too, okay? For example, if you have a minimization problem and your feasible region goes to the negative infinity without touching any um, corner points or edge, then you can have an unbounded solution uh, where your objective function value is a negative infinity. And the third, the, the, the next one in feasibility, that happens when you cannot satisfy all the constraints at the same time. So the when you define the feasible regions from those uh, constraints, you can find the overlapping area, then you have an infeasible solution. So no solution, infeasible problem, okay. The last one, the feasible region can be a line or a point. This happens when you have uh, at least the one equation in your constraint. So if you have one equation in your constraint and uh, that equation defines a line and that line has part of it within the feasible region defined by your other constraints, then you have uh, the special situation where your feasible region is a line. So it's just a part of that line within the feasible region defined by your other constraints. Or if you have at least the two equations in your constraints, then you will have uh, the special situation where your feasible solution is a point, which is also your optimal solution because you have no other choice. Okay, so those are the special conditions in LP models and uh, um, Please go through those different situations and think about uh, when they happen and what kind of like a special characteristics they have. And just to review it yourself again.